Guy Martin is investigating the infrastructure behind Britain's energy bills. With heating, transport and industry relying increasingly on electricity, this power-hungry nation is not only changing the way it uses power, but also how it makes it, as it strives towards a carbon-free electricity grid by 2035. And that's all all right, building these new forms of power generation, but a big part of it is getting rid of the old ones. Fire! Over the last decade, the power industry has set an example to us all and reduced its emissions by 65% as it demolishes old power stations. Egbra Power Station burnt coal for half a century. One of four massive plants built near the Yorkshire coal seams, providing electricity for two million homes. It has been systematically dismantled for the past two years, and today is the last blast. Guy is here to help with this most explosive type of Britain's energy transformation. We've just got the chimney to blow down. 17,000 tonnes of concrete and steel, 200 metres tall. 200 metres, eh? Yeah, and then the boiler house, right? 45,000 tonnes of steel. All within the space of a few seconds, boy, she's going to be in the floor. Except there are two issues. Yeah, so the first problem is, right, when we're blowing that up and the chimney, um, that's a live substation. So if we damage that, we're knocking the whole of Yorkshire off the national grid. So we won't be popular. Right, so that's there. And then 800 metres that way is a glass factory, which is very sensitive to vibration. So we could have a few problems. The demolition will need to be carefully controlled with a number of different techniques. First, the building is pre-weakened with each supporting leg sliced diagonally. And there's more cuts this side of the building than that side. So when the building goes, it's hopefully going to come this way. And to help the job along, we've got these cutting charges. You see these? Right. And it's got this RDX explosive in the middle that originated in the Second World War. And it was using the bouncing bomb. You know, the Bounds Wallace job. You set these off with an explosive cord, which are these orange cables running about. That's how you set that off. Then we have the kicking charge, right? They call this the bomb, and I'm very honoured to hold this, because if I drop this, it's going to get messy. Gelignite, a bit like dynamite. Right? Alfred Noble came up with it years ago. Um, this is the stuff. So what we're going to do, we've got the quitting charge that's going to split the building. This is going to be the bomb that blows the bottoms of the legs out behind those sandbags. The sandbags are sort of doing three jobs um, to try and channel the energy towards the bottom of the leg, and stop the debris flying out towards us. I mean, we're going to be 650 metres away, so hopefully nothing's going to get to us. And then to try and keep a bit of the sound energy in as well, because it's going to be noisy. The boys have been saying, you, you'll feel the noise. You will feel the noise. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Right, where do you want us, boss? Sound, yeah. Go on, where are we going? We're going straight through the gap in the fence there. Right. The fuse wire is laid out to a safe zone, where it will be triggered by the spark of an igniter. The police use thermal imaging to check that the buildings are clear. A place that powered British homes for more than a million hours is silent. After two years of detailed preparations, few people on the demolition team are ever comfortable pressing the trigger. Get in the drill, mate. Don't press it yet. That one there. Guy Martin is a willing volunteer. Nine, nine, eight, eight, seven, six, six, five, four, three, Two, one, fire now, fire now, fire now. All sentries maintain your position. Not 
bless him. <laughs> Said as calmly as that. <laughs> Did you like that? Was that real guy? <laughs> that was mega hey? tap very much. In the space of 12 seconds, a 50-year landscape has changed forever. That was just absolute devastation. The substation next door survives intact, but otherwise Egbra is now rubble. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a bit getting over that. 99% of which will be recycled. for heating, cooking, generating electricity, and powering industry. But as the principal cause of climate change, its versatility came a great cost. Just four plants capable of burning coal now remain. After 140 years, the first age of power generation is almost over. I'm not saying good riddance, I am not saying that. Yeah, the job's got to move on, but yeah, what a massive engineering achievement it would have been 50 years ago, you know? <laughs> what a piece of kit. If I just look at what this place did, up until only four years ago, it was putting out burning coal and putting out that thick end of two gigawatts. You know, look, look at all the shops, the hospitals, the houses that it's powered, how many kettles has it boiled? You know what I mean? It was a good explosion, though, wasn't it? Wasn't it? It was a good explosion. Yeah, so here we go. This is me making Britain that bit cleaner. Blowing up coal-fired power stations, yeah. 